Over the years, thousands of people have commented about how CNanner's original Minecraft Alpha series got them into the game. While most of the YouTubers who have played a massive part in the game's early success have either provided world downloads or their seeds have already been cracked by the community, the two seeds CNanner's played on in his original Let's Play series have remained a mystery up until this point. In this video, we'll cover the rocky history of Minecraft at Home's CNanner seed cracking project in chronological order, revealing both seeds in the process so that everyone can revisit the memories made in these worlds once again. It all started on October 23rd, 2020, when Bailey J. III, presently known as The Ishikawa Reen, posted this suggestion in our Project Suggestions channel. While it didn't gain much traction at the time among the team, they would later mention that CNanners had found dungeons during his playthrough, which could be good news. Dungeon floor based cracking tools have been around for a while, helping players uncover many long lost worlds. However, due to CNanners never showing his coordinates, a more sophisticated approach would need to be taken. Thinking we might be able to find the exact coordinates of the spawn point later, our member boy Sanic began to trace the route CNanners took in his video and recreated the whole path from spawn all the way to the dungeon, making at least its relative position known. But while he was successful in tracing the path itself, he wouldn't be so lucky with recreating the dungeon floor, as a big portion of it was hard to make out due to poor lighting and low video quality. Despite that, he, along with the Ishikawa Rin and Polymetric, went on trying to find the coordinates of the spawn point using clouds. They quickly located the correct cloud patterns, but then made a silly mistake and wrongly determined the Z coordinate to be in the thousands, leading Boy Sanic to waste a lot of time coding a seed cracker based on distant spawn locations. They also calculated the X coordinate from the clouds based on the assumption that CNanners didn't open any other worlds before recording. However, after closer examination of the clouds much later in the project, this assumption unfortunately turned out to be wrong as well. For now though, Boy Sanic and Polymetric continued with their research in finding the seed through the spawn location. Despite the spawn location not being tied to the world seed, the idea was that since the Java random objects responsible for both of these are created one after the other in series, it should theoretically be possible to figure out one by knowing the other. This idea became even more promising when Boy Sanic and Polymetric, during their research into what computer setup CNanners used at the time, found out that he was likely playing on an old Mac Pro. Not only did the system.nanotime Java function return actual Unix time on that platform instead of time since startup, but also a bug in Apple's old JDK caused this function to return microseconds multiplied by 1000 instead of true nanoseconds, reducing the possible amount of values to try by a factor of 1000. This discovery made everyone interested in trying to crack the seed using this unique method instead of more conventional means, and so a lot of time had been invested in it. Boy Sanic wrote multiple filtering CUDA kernels and was even preparing some code to be ran on Boink. However, after multiple failed attempts, new information revealing all of the wrong assumptions they had previously made, and more research into the RNG's uniquifier revealing that the range of possible values to check would actually be too vast to be worth it, we unfortunately abandoned this idea as well. After this, progress on the project had stalled, as did the motivation of our members. It took until January of 2021 for that motivation to return, this time with a much more realistic seed cracking plan. With some advice from Cortex, both Boy Sanic and another member, Mr. Spike, started working on code that would crack the seed using the dungeon's chest loot instead of its hard to see floor. Funnily enough, all three of them ended up writing their own versions of loot cracking code with their own sets of mistakes. And even after fixing what they thought was all of it, nobody could get a result that would fully match CNanner's dungeon, leading them to wonder if he modified some of it while not recording. One last ray of hope appeared to shine on the project when Mr. Spike noticed that CNanner's had actually discovered a second dungeon in episode 14. And so he, along with everyone else, recreated it and tried all their code on this dungeon as well. As you may probably expect at this point though, due to the issue being with their code and not the dungeons themselves, they got zero results, yet again. At this point, the team was stumped, and to be frank, quite demotivated to continue the project. So all progress halted for several months, yet again. Eventually though, on the evening of the 2nd of May, 2021, 
the project was brought to the attention of Matt, who's another member of our team. After taking a look at the project, he decided to start from scratch instead of relying on anyone else's code or data, a decision that would pay off in the end. After a few hours of work, as he was already preparing to run his code, Cortex came to check up on his progress, during which they realized what stupid mistake in the old month's code was. They miscounted the amount of gunpowder by one. With that mistake now fixed though, the race was on, with everyone once again competing to be the first to find the dungeon seed. It didn't take long for the winner to be revealed, as Cortex managed to find it roughly an hour after fixing the mistake. In the end though, it was a group effort, as the code Cortex ran was originally written by Boy Sanic, while Matt provided the computing power for it. This wasn't the end of the story, however, because more work needed to be done to reverse the dungeon seed into an actual world seed. There are many ways one could do that, and despite terrain checking being among the slowest, Matt got a hold of an AMD Threadripper 3990X, a 64 core monster of a processor, and did it anyway. He wrote code that would check every candidate world seed for the dungeon's existence and layout using a full cave simulator, as well as an additional check for the second dungeon scene enters found to further filter the seeds. All of this hard work would finally pay off on May 6th, 1938 UTC. It was finally done. Matt had managed to find the seed of Seenander's Let's Play World after it managed to elude everyone for so long. As you may have guessed by the length of this video, even this is still not the end of the story. Months, eventually two years went by as we slowly worked on creating this video on and off, writing multiple versions of the script, trying to fully but concisely summarize this roller coaster of a project, with multiple voicing and editing attempts too, but never managing to fully finish it all. And although some just called it procrastination, it seemed more like the curse which haunted this project was still alive and kicking, and we later realized why. The project wasn't over yet. There was still one more seed left to find, the one Seenanners played on towards the end of the series after he made a new world. Despite us being aware of it now though, it didn't seem like anyone was really interested in cracking it, until one day, out of nowhere, prominent Minecraft at Home member Andrew surprised everyone by posting a screenshot of the world on April 7th, 2023 at 2252 UTC, after cracking it all on his own. Andrew later explained that after making his own recreation, he simply used an already well-known tree-based technique to crack the seed using some code he wrote. He didn't even need to find the coordinates, as he found a chunk that had four large trees in it, which, in combination with the alignment of the terrain shape, yielded only two possible chunk offsets that needed to be checked by his filter. Then, after reversing all the possible chunk seeds into candidate world seeds, he filtered them further using a few nearby small trees, yielding the final seed for Seenander's second world, which you can now see on screen. If you want to plan either of these worlds yourself, you can either use save editing tools to generate it on your own, or simply just follow the link in the description where we have a world download already prepared for you. Before we close out, we'd like to apologize for how late this video is. Between some of us having full-time responsibilities outside of Minecraft at home and general burnout on the project, we found it challenging to have the time or motivation to wrap this all up. After all this time, however, we're happy to finally release this to you all and bring this chapter to a close. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. In the description is our Discord server where all our research takes place, along with a credits document which details all the people who put work into this project. From everyone at Minecraft at Home, thank you so much for watching.